welcome to the Teeny Tinkers channel. I make ball jointed doll and craft related content. It's time for another dolly custom. I haven't done a custom in a little while, quite a while. I've been so busy working on other BJD and craft related content that I haven't actually done a custom. But my family was watching the Mario movie the other night and I was thinking Princess Peach would make her really cute BJD but not in the obvious costume type way, more in the inspired by way that I, I like to do myself. I have been repainting through my Teeny Tinker Skulls, which are on this side, for the last few weeks, months. I do actually have a blank Jones Sew the Pop to repaint, to paint, to do up. And I thought she would be so cute and so perfect for this look. I've already painted through all of the hollows except for Willow, who's face up I already love. But the other soda pops have already gotten their makeovers and it's time for this one. But before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button and also follow if you're not already following. It really helps the channel, it helps me make more content like this, and it helps support me as an artist. All right, let's get started. So I started off with her wig, and that is of course because the wig is my very least favorite thing to do, and also the thing that takes the longest. A few weeks ago I learned how to make wigs from my dear friend Hope Creation. I actually have a video on this channel if you're interested, but I'm basically following the same premise. Although for time's sake I am making my wig cap out of hot glue. I found that this doesn't work quite as well as the wood glue or white glue, but it does dry almost immediately. The fit is questionable though. If anyone has tips on making the hot glue wig stick to the head better once it's finished, please let me know down in the comments because I have not quite figured that out yet. I also bought these really great silicone makeup tools. I think they're intended for face masks, but they worked really well in this case as well. I've also totally used them to apply gloss or mod podge to things in the past. I did let the hot glue dry for a little bit just to make sure it was fully cool and had the best fit. From there, I used my hands to take off the elastics because I usually cut these off, but that's such a waste of elastics. So I've started trying to save them wherever possible. All right, elastics are off. Now let's get this head cap off. I use what are apparently, according to you guys, the biggest scissors in the world to trim this down and make sure it's a perfect half circle. Then I pull out all of my wig hair making supplies, namely this acrylic roving yarn. I have a bunch of colors of this and it's a lot coarser than say something like viscose, but it does the trick. In the future, I would probably just buy viscose because it's smoother by default. The colors are really pretty though. Since the last time I made the wig, I learned that you do not actually cut the wefts. You have to pull them because the individual strands within the yarn are kind of a set length. I make the hairs by pulling both yellow and white roving to kind of create a blend. Then I use the Wig Brush 3000, AKA this cat brush bought exclusively for this purpose. I did not use this on my cats. And I use that to brush through the yarn, which further increases the quality of the blend, but also makes it much easier to straighten. I do have to do the brush straighten, brush straighten thing like two or three times for each section of hair. Then all I have to do is use the biggest scissors ever to cut the tops off so they're straight, apply some white glue, and press it on. From there, I just add some more glue on top just to make sure it's really on there so I have minimal hair loss when I go to brush it later. I considered doing this wig as blonde because Princess Peach's yellow hair is blonde coated but I thought for the cutesy cartoony look I was going for, I should really lean into this yellow, even though it really is so bright. Like I cannot describe to you off camera, this is like highlighter mustard. It is the brightest yellow that has ever existed, but I hope that the white tones it down enough so it's not quite so punch you in the face with color. 
All right, at this point, I'm getting towards the top of the head and I'm working on the crown. I have to apply this as bangs and do kind of a center part. This is as good as I could do. All right, well, I'll style this later. Let's move on to what's next for now. All right, it is time to go through my fabrics and find all of the most very pink ones. Princess Peach is wearing a pink long gown by default. And I decided I was going to do something very pink, although not so long. I have this really great shiny patent leather and I knew I wanted to use that. I did not use all the fabric shown, that would be ridiculous, but I pulled them all out so that I could figure out what I wanted to do. Also, I'm going to need you to all pretend that you cannot see the white lights glaring off of my desk. I recently recovered the desk in this like white contact paper because I thought it would look better for filming, but now I just see every light and it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know, let me know what you think. The old wood desk underneath was really beat up and I thought this would look better, but I don't know. So I decided on this vinyl and also this pink ribbed fabric. The other stuff is really nice. I love this satin and I wanted to use it, but oh my god. God, do I hate sewing with satin. It frays so much and it just it just splits and it bites me and I, I just hate it so much. I don't know what else to say about that. With my fabrics chosen, it is officially time to get started on actually making the outfits. Now, Sew the Pop is sadly incapacitated and to the side with a hot glue wig drying on her head. So I'm going to be using this Wesley slash yellow colored hollow I have that's just laying around blank that I can use because they have the same body. It's the same body. So I can just use this to make the clothes. I'm going to start with the skirt. I really want to do a pleated skirt for this one, and in particular box pleats. However, I've never actually done fully box pleats for a skirt, and especially in this vinyl fabric. Typically with pleats, I would kind of measure them out and pin them, which you're going to see me do here. However, I did not realize how thick this fabric was and how hard it was going to be to stick pins through it. So I ended up doing it a different way. You'll see in a few minutes, uh, it's coming up, but it was a struggle. This fabric is really nice in the fact that it doesn't fray and you can cut it and you do not need to hem it. So I was really for it on that side. So it ended up working out, I think. I got this fabric in a set of pre-cut leather pieces from Amazon in a big pack of pastel-ish colors. This was the only really shiny one though, which was pretty random, but I was happy to get it. So I used a pencil to mark out how far I wanted the box plates apart. Yes, this is a piece of a thank you note from my packaging, but we're just going to pretend it's a ruler because I did not have a ruler on hand. So I used this to measure out roughly one and a half centimeter pieces. This is about how wide I wanted the box plates to be apart. This cut of fabric worked out really weirdly well though because it made basically two rows of box pleat fabric as well as a waistband. I did have to try and decide where I wanted the waistband to sit on this body though because the waist is so small on this body that it wants to slide all skirts and pants up but I wanted this to sit more low-waisted, so I shot for that in the end. I do have to kind of tug it down over her hips to get it to fit perfectly, but once it's there, it stays well. Clover is holding some pins for me for absolutely no reason because I ended up not being able to pin this whole skirt. This was not for a lack of trying. I really did pull up a tutorial on how to pin these things and I had the pins ready and I'm going to fail at it in three, two, one. The look of confusion on my face is very evident. 
I've obviously never tried to pin a fabric like this before, and you know what, probably never will again. All right, instead I'm going to add ribbon to the bottom of the skirt. I want this to look kind of like a tennis skirt, so I want to add those stripes to the bottom. I decide on this light pink ribbon, which is really cute and complimentary over the hot pink fabric. After changing out the blue thread that has been set up for the last couple weeks on my sewing machine, I switch it out for a really cute pink, thread the machine, and begin sewing on the strips of ribbon. I think this ribbon adds such a cute amount of detail to this skirt, and really to any dress or skirt you're making. I love the little ribbon stripes, I just think they're the greatest. And I think it also worked really well with this fabric because it didn't add a lot of bulk to the fabric. All right, let's add on the second one. Super easy and it was really easy to space them because I just had to leave basically one ribbon's width in the middle, which worked out really well for me. What was way less easy was sewing the actual box pleats. Uh, without pinning the pleats, this was a lot more difficult and I had to basically sew a little bit, bend the pleat, sew it over and then sew backwards and then sew forwards and then do the next pleat and so on and so forth for the whole piece and then for the whole second piece. And it took much longer than I would have liked it to take, but I will say that at least the pleats held pretty well. The one nice thing about this vinyl fabric is while it's thick and impossible to pin, it does look really cool in a pleat. All right, let's just trim up the tops because ain't nobody need this much bulk. Okay, this is so cute. Let's make another one. And now we have two. Honestly, adorable. I attach these and add a zipper as well. This was also my first time sewing a zipper. I've never done this before. And thank God for YouTube tutorials because otherwise I would have absolutely zero idea what I was doing. It would be a problem. But it looks pretty cute. I would totally wear this. All right, moving on to this ribbed fabric, which came in a tube. I love when fabrics come in a tube. They throw me right back to like 2008 with the infinity scarves. This was a whole vibe. Like the indie girls were all into this. All right, but uh, goodbye tube. It is time to cut a tiny shirt. So the shirt idea is basically a t-shirt. However, it's got this high mock neck to kind of imitate how Princess Peach's dress comes up higher, although hers has lace at the top and I didn't feel like putting lace on the top of the neck because I thought it would look weird, but I used hollow again to measure it out. I wanted it to sort of flare out with her body at the end so it wasn't too tight and didn't try and ride up back up her body. I wanted it to sit a little bit above the skirt and have lots of wiggle room. So I cut it out with the high neck and I also made it so I would need to attach the sleeves separate, which is how I sew most of my shirts this day. I used to do it a lot more in one piece and I definitely try and add more pieces now, which makes it more detailed and cute. I did cheat by using the top of the tube of the fabric, I guess, for the top of the neck. That way I didn't have to hem it and it looks super cute anyways. This fabric is really thick and sturdy and definitely gives like thick sweater vibes. It's definitely not like a flowy t-shirt at all, but it is very cute. I add on the sleeves and I pulled them so that they would kind of puff up a little bit. And then I use some pink lacy elastic on the ends. And the point of this is to make a little bit of a puff sleeve and also to add a little bit of a lace detail to the sleeves, which I think is really precious and I think makes it look a little bit more princessy in general. Okay. 
I want to take a minute to thank Clover for her service of keeping the absolutely useless pins nice and safe for me. Thanks, girl. You're doing all the heavy lifting in this project. And also, the sewing machine is fully vibrating, and it's probably doing a lot of the heavy lifting, too. Is it supposed to vibrate? I don't know, but it is, so we're just going to allow it. All right, here's the shirt. Pretty cute, right? Okay, so this is the base of the outfit. Now I have to build off all the accessories and the other stuff. First, I'm going to make a bag. Now, the bag is based off of what I would call the Mario Star because I'm not hardcore into video games or anything like that. I just like cute things and I like to make cute things. And when I Googled Mario Star, this is what came up. Although my daughter has since informed me that this star is not actually from what is apparently Princess Peach's kingdom, but is actually from Rosalina's kingdom. And I only know who Rosalina is because I have played video games with my kids. And I'm only really talking about Super Mario Party. And uh, my one daughter is always Rosalina, so I guess she would know. Anyways, I made the little star from Rosalina's land, I guess, into a bag for Princess Peach, and we're just all going to deal with it and not come for me, okay? Apparently Princess Peach should have had a mushroom bag. I didn't know, and it is too late. And anyways, this matches her color scheme better, so. I used super glue and hot glue and some like little chains and some, just a whole bunch of stuff to make this cute bag. Honestly, if I was going to be sending this to somebody, I would use more super glue, but I went hot glue because it's just going to sit on her shoulder. It doesn't have to be super durable, but I do think I need some more accessories. Now, I did not feel like 3D printing and sculpting these because I didn't want to wait, frankly, and I wanted to try and make something else out of the mountain of polymer clay I've got. So I soften a bunch of it up and I decide I'm going to make a crown as well as the kind of brooch necklace that she has. I believe Princess Peach's brooch thing is usually on her dress. Like it's a blue opal on her dress and she's got these like big blue earrings and I wanted to make those. Now the crown was kind of easy, but kind of hard. I don't know, like it should have been easier than it was. The brooch, I tried to add more details into it and I sculpted the gem separately so it would be easier to paint and I think that was definitely the right choice. Too bad. All right, so I remade the crown from the first one you saw because I did not make the right crown. So I actually made this four tier kind of pointy one with the gems already built on so that I could just paint them in the cute colors. I also decided to make some little keychains for the bag. I made one of those little blocks that you hit and the like mushrooms or coins come out of. I made a Yoshi egg, which I don't know if that is a Princess Peach thing, but it's a Mario thing. And I made the mushroom that should have apparently been the bag. <laughs> All right, the wig is dry. It is obviously late at night, but I'm gonna go ahead and style this. First of all, I'm pulling out the front pieces that I need to flip because Princess Peach has kind of flippy hair around her face. Although this is looking real wild. This is not looking cute. This is looking like an electrocution. I, mm, I don't know, a little bit Yu-Gi-Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not here for it. But I have a straightener, some random curl cream mousse stuff. I don't know, it, it's the closest thing to gel that's in my house. And I have like a eyebrow facial razor that I had been recommended to use to do the majority of hair cutting. This is to make the cut smoother and less choppy, which I didn't think was going to be a big deal, but actually is really a big deal when you're cutting doll hair. So this is definitely a 10 out of 10. I super recommend using one of these razors if you've got one. Uh, you could probably even use like a leg razor if you had nothing else. I don't know though. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, this is looking even more Yu-Gi-Oh now. Like I'm really, <laughs> really not here for this. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I used this straightener from literally 2002, 2005 maybe, to comb through the hair and then flip up the ends. Once I put the mousse in, it held really well and I'm really happy with how smooth everything came out. Like, it's looking a bit wild here, but it's it's cute at the end, I think. 
You see what I mean? It's not so bad. I did decide I needed to cut some more layers up top in the back though, so I could flip out some of the hair coming from the top of her head in the back, so it wasn't just flipping out at the front, because it was not as cute as it could have been. So she got another round of haircut, and honestly, styling this was way more relaxing and fun than actually making it. So I gingerly took it off and then used the yellow hollow slash Wesley as a wig stand. Honestly, she has been so helpful, much more helpful than Clover. Sorry girl, but holding pins I didn't need was not the move. But it is time to go to bed and the next day I am back. I am back with the fully cooked and ready to use clay pieces and also with a triple sprayed so the pop head, which I sprayed the night before. I'm starting with my base layer. I mean, I do a lot of these kinds of face-ups. If you're interested in how I do face-ups, I have a ton of videos on this channel and on my second channel that goes over how I do face-ups and my methods and why I do things and what materials I use. So definitely check that out if this kind of thing interests you. I did this face-up in I think three layers and I also decided to blush her hands. Now, I've only really blushed the hands on one other doll, and I still love the way it looks. It's so nice in photos, it looks really lively when she's got her hands up by her face, and as well, painting their nails is always fun. Little painted doll nails are the cutest things ever, and I always give them like a French tip at the end. Like, I don't know if that's what you call it, but when the white of the nail is at the end, I just think it's a cute little detail that I just can't haul myself from doing when I paint their nails. All right, so while I finish this face up, I'm going to just lead you away for a minute so that we can look at the doll of the week. So this week's doll of the week comes from Tappy Diary. I've definitely mentioned her before here on this channel. I love her dolls. They are super cute and she has been sharing photos of her Sew the Pop. So she got this Sew the Pop in the, I think June, 2022 pre-order and has been styling her and did this like amazing wig and oh my god she's so cute. Uh, thank you so much for sharing her Eva, she looks so good and I always love seeing your photos. If you want to be considered for doll of the week, don't forget to share your photos over on Instagram using hashtag teeny tinkers dolls or even better yet tag me because Instagram's algorithm is and their tagging system is all out of whack right now so this is basically the easiest way to make sure that I see it. But anyways, thank you again for sharing Eva and let's get back to the video and see how that face up is going. It definitely has been going. We are working on the final details on this layer and just adding little lines into the lips, accentuating the mouth and also finishing off the hands with those cute little lines on the nails that I was talking about. I just used some white acrylic paint for this and I also used a blue acrylic paint to add a little bit of veining. I tend to paint these on and then kind of dab them off with my fingers because they always go on too dark and I want them to be so super faint, just barely visible. And then more on the bold side, I'm painting the accessories. I used Posca pens and other paint markers for this. It works really well. I try and use the watercolor or the gouache on polymer clay and it doesn't always catch in the same way or it can look really streaky so it's not always my favorite but I like to do these Poscas as the initial layer and they work really well. Like they're a little pricey, they're a lot pricey if I'm going to be honest but they're super duper nice and you can get the fine tip ones which give you even better control. Although I say that not being able to hold the piece as I'm painting it and using this like makeup brush <laughs> just to make sure the piece isn't sliding everywhere while I'm painting it. I also use chalk pastels for the blue bits. This is the earrings and then kind of that jewel in the middle of her necklace, her brooch thing. So that looks really cute and it went on pretty well. I did really have to pack it on to make sure it's stuck, but in the end it did go on. Ignore the gouache paint because it contributed absolutely nothing to this conversation. It didn't do anything. Uh, it just basically slid right off the polymer clay. Also, a quick note, if you're painting your polymer clay, this might be obvious to you. This was not obvious to me. 
I went to sculpt something like a hot minute ago and tried to paint it with a paint marker and it got really sticky and it turns out I had painted it with an oil paint and it was icky and there was nothing to do to save it. You couldn't put gloss over it. You couldn't seal it. It was just always sticky and I had to throw the whole thing out. So just really make sure you're using like a water-based paint and not an oil-based paint because they're not friends. Anyways, I am just adding some gloss to certain parts of this accessories and crown and everything that I'm making, as well as adding details onto all of the tiny charms I made for the bag. Oh, and here I am painting the eyes. Princess Peach has big blue like anime character type eyes because she's like a Nintendo character. But I didn't want to do like an anime doll, obviously. So the Poppet's not an anime doll. I made her some really big, pretty blue eyes anyways and just went with it. All right, I'm just using some clear elastic cord to put all of the little keychain things together. I think they look really cute. Even if they're not super discernible, I think it adds a nice level of detail to this bag. And all I had to do from here is kind of tie it on to the bag itself. And I used a little bit of hot glue to make sure it wasn't going to be flinging everywhere or come loose. Really cute, I think. And here's how the eyes turned out. They are just basic blue eyes, but I really love the shade and I think they're pretty. Okay, so here's the feet. Realistically, I should have made these bigger. I messed it up in the scaling, but they do end up working okay, though I do think I'm going to make her some bigger ones in the future. But these are some shoes I sculpted for my 100 days of sculpting project, and they are basically just feet that have the shoe on them. Honestly, this is a concept I would like to make more of because I think this is really handy, although you do have to like paint the shoes, which is kind of a pain. I used a couple layers of just white acrylic as a base, although in the future I would probably just go ahead and airbrush this because I think that would be easier. Alright, after a couple coats, it's time for some color. I basically didn't do anything really super Mario about this, but instead just kind of went with the color palette of her outfit and painted the shoes that way. One thing I realized is I did not add laces to these shoes when I was sculpting them, and I did not feel like gluing laces on after the fact, so I think realistically I would go back and just sculpt some laces on. I think this would be better or maybe adjust the sculpting so that it's much easier to actually lace them. I don't know, let me know what you think. But anyways, I just basically used pinks and blues and yellows to kind of color the shoe and make their a decent level of detail. I don't know, I think they came out really cute. But let me know what you think about these and also what you think about sculpted shoes in general. But here they are, and that is the last thing we needed to make. So let's put it all together and see how she looks. Okay, I think she came out so cute. She's definitely giving Princess Peach, but make it super duper cute. Obviously the feet are really small on her, but she can stand on them. So I guess they're not too small. Maybe I'm just used to seeing her with really, really big feet, so it did feel really different. But I'm really happy with how this custom came out, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thanks so much for subscribing. And if you're new here, I hope you like the content and will consider subscribing. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye!